So I'm checking to see what the depth or bottomed out inside the lifter is. So this one has all the guts in it now. So roughly 319? Yeah, 320? It's more, it's more like 312 to 315. Okay. Measure, so this one I got in it. So this is uh, a number 10 lifter. It's smooth inside the piston, moving good and everything? It is now that came all the muck out of it. Uh, it seemed clean, but it had to burnish itself in. That word, you don't know what it was? Yeah, I know what it is now. Burnishing tool. Get all the stuff out of it. So I kept putting parts in there to see if it changed the depth. It didn't change it. So if we run this as a solid, basically this bottoms out in the bore down here. You have no push rod? It's all the way down. See, this one doesn't stick at the bottom like that one does. Right. So it's all the way down. Comes back up, turn nine degrees, it does the same thing. In case it's not around or anything. Mm -hmm. So this one goes in like that, no problem. And when you measure it with everything out of it. 315. Yeah. So make no difference. So whether you got guts in or not, that's bottomed out. Right. So having the guts doesn't make any difference. Lengthwise. So you're not going to pound the guts out of it. Mm -hmm. Even if it quits working, it's metal on metal inside the lifter. Right. So it sounds like crap, but it's not really going to damage the lifter on this style. The older style ones, they had like a little, like a star washer in there. Yeah. And they had little, little flat little spring things. Some holes in it. Fingers sticking out and the fingers would break off. Oh. So this design with the chuck ball doesn't do it that way. It's just different design. Okay. So I don't know when they went to this style of design, but that's what it is. Okay, so anyway, this is a number 10 lifter. It works. So that's a brand new one. So we're going to rebuild this new lifter by buying, putting another new body in it. A little bit looser. It's, this is a performance lifter now. It's got a looser fit. I'm not sure if that's performance or not. So this one over here was sticking a little bit, so we'll get rid of that one. Right. I'm going to this one. The same guts from the other one? Now this one here is the other one we got, and there's nothing wrong with any of these guts either. Except this one bleeds a little bit more than this one. So this okay. one has the best bleed off. Pretty good. Yeah. Now it was sticking slightly. I can't see any way in the world sticking would cause a problem because the sticking wasn't that much. Whatever. Just in case it was, this one don't stick. Could be enough to make the tapping noise, wouldn't it? Tapping noise because it goes boom, 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 boom like that because there's no hydraulic underneath. Now, I don't know how much hydraulic action adjustment we need on the push rod to make this thing completely bottom out. But right. At least we know it's about that far down now, underneath the snap ring. But we'll see that after we put it together. So, I can either put together dry or I can put together with parts, doesn't really matter. Put together with parts. So, I said dry. The difference between dry and wet. So this is called dry. Okay. You know it's dry? Because it's not going to hydraulic no more, right? You don't put anything in there yet. <coughs> so oh, oil. I see what you're saying. So we're trying to educate ourselves on what things are when we're looking through the hole on the top. So the way you do that is you got to try different things. So you clip it in. So that's how much free play we have in there. Quite a bit. I can't measure that with a caliper, but probably get in there with a six inch scale and get this kind of a rough idea. Half in? No. I can't see it. I'm trying to see the light. It's about 180. 180? See, that's 200 right there. Okay. Yeah. Are you looking at the, at the clip? Yes, puts yeah. the limitation. Right. So it's about 180 down. Okay. So I can do now is measure the push rod, see how many threads 180 is, and that'll give us about how many revolutions it is. No push rod? <clears throat> I don't have one. You got one? Yep. We'll mix them. The other one I left up. 
This is the exhaust. I didn't take one, I left a paper clip on it. So it wouldn't get mixed up. So we have a nut right here, sir. Yep. So that's about 180. Two nuts thickness? Two right there? Yep. So now you go, how many turns is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And that's why flats. we bottomed out because we're at 20 and then we went another 6 flats and bottomed. Yeah. So there you go. It's 25 to 26 flats. Okay. Is where your lifter is going to bottom out at. So that's called a solid at that point. Right. And right now the solid sound the best so far, except for a little bit. Well, until it warms up, then it becomes non active. Yeah. <clears throat> so. We know how many, if we go 18 flats, we're kind of in the middle of the area where it should be in. Figuring the lifter should be in the middle of its range. We know we got 26 with total, right? So 13 flats would be in the middle of the range. If we go to 18, we're more two thirds away in. <clears throat> and then when it grows up in heat, it'll come back up to about the middle of 13 again, roughly. So it should be about 18 flats to maybe 20 max. Pretty much where like we're we've at. we've been doing it, right? Right where we're at. So we can try 18 instead of 20. I don't think it make any difference, but we can try that, see if it makes a difference. I don't know how the oil galleries line up in here to work. So, how it fills that hole? Right now, I think it, you can see the top of the lifter right here. Yeah. This machine mark right here. Right. It's right here. You can see it. I think because it's under such tremendous pressure, it just fills up no, no matter where the thing is. Now you go right here, you see there's a big hole. Right. So what is the hole? The bottom part coming up? So that's the bottom of the lifter. Can't be the bottom of the lifter. Looks like the bottom. Must be the hole on up. There's no hole. Oh, that's this piece. Yeah. The top, right? Yeah. So the lifter's not coming up right. So when it comes all the way up to there, that's feeding oil up to your lifter, no problem. Because remember, it has a groove. Mm -hmm. Letting oil in. So whenever that lifter gets up to that point, the oil will start flowing, see? So unless you're that far down, there's no oil. How far down is that? Where's my flashlight? I can't see. Where's the flashlight? I don't see it. I don't see it. Somewhere. I'm on the seat. Some place. Okay, so we can see the oil flow right there. <clears throat> see how deep we are? Yep. Pretty far down. It's almost. We got to be at least 20 flats to get pressure top in. So that tells you if you don't, if you only run in just one flat end to keep the noise to a minimum, you have no oil. Is the bottom piston in there right now? No, hold it. You go the other direction. When it's all the way down, you shut the oil flow off. So if you adjust it for bottom down conditions, we're not getting any flow to the top end. It's not good. So it has to be. So that's about all I want to go. It's about the halfway open. Almost right on the thing. So that's an incentive not to go too deep. The deeper you go, the more you cut the flow off. So if you don't want any flow to your top end, bottom and out is a solid. Yeah, we don't want that. You'll have no flow to your no top thanks. end. No thanks. Forget about that one. You don't like that one? Forget about that idea. But I do like the extra so that's six this turns right over here. This is our flow. See, that's the bottom groove. I can't see the damn thing. It's on the video, though. Mm -hmm. So the second groove up there, I don't understand how you get oil to that. I don't think it does get oil to it. I think it just eliminates the drag so you don't... So this piece here doesn't stick in there. 
they both go up together, don't they? Up and down together? Yeah, but this is tight. It's got some clearance, but not a ton of it. Well, there's a couple thou clearance, but it's not tense thou, like the other one is. So this has still got, it's pretty tight. And that's where the oil hole is, it goes to the top. See, that doesn't make sense. down this. It looks like the only flow you get whatever pisses past the tight corners you got here. It's under pressure. Yeah, this, you can see it moving, but that ain't much. That's a couple thousand most. It's a round circle all the way around. Unless they machined it smaller down there. And if they made that lip a little bit smaller diameter, a little more flow past, maybe. I don't know. You know. The tighter the tolerances are, the more pressure you keep. The taller, you know, yeah, it's because it's not released, it's not sent at the top end. You're restricting flow. I know these are restricted a little bit. So it looks like they're restricting by not giving any way to get no way to get up there, I guess. Okay, so either way, we know if we bottom this thing out. I guess it doesn't really matter because it's going to have to breathe around the outside anyway, but if you bottom it out, it, you're only breathing around this little hole there, you're not around the whole circle. Because there's no oil getting past it if you bottom that out. The only way it gets up to the push rod is to go through there though, isn't it? You want to hopefully you're going to get whatever leaks past the OD and goes up. Yep. It's all there. If you put a groove between here and here, then it'll the direct feed and go flood top on the oil. Right. So if you want more top, more oil, you top in, just flatten that out a little bit for the grinder. And get some flow. Yeah. That's probably how car lifters is probably got a flat spot right there because they're unlimited. Who's? Flow. Car lifters. Oh. Because <coughs> that's the big difference between the SNS lifter and a car lifter is a car lifter doesn't limit the flow of the top end where it hardly does. So I guess they're limited by being very tight claw marks or whatever. I thought car lifters do the same thing. Oil goes through the push rod. Yeah, but they're not limited like Harleys are. Oh. Cars have big ass pumps in them. Like they do have large pumps. Little, small little pumps. Yeah. Only takes five PSI to make these things work. So. All right. So that's about all I'm seeing here. It's kind of a uh, unknowns. All right, so put a little oil in here, but not much. <clears throat> so this is the one that doesn't work very well. Well, none of them work very well, actually, the rear bars. So. Just want to bled off faster? Yeah. But it fit in the body good? Yeah, the fit's good. It just doesn't work very well, for whatever reason, on your bike. It's on the exhaust lifter. Right. On the rear cylinder. We didn't try it on the other hole yet. Maybe it works better on the other Right, we're supposed to try that to see if that's what... <laughs> what the problem was. I'd have to take the motor part out two or more three times to do my testing. I want to test all these combination of parts out. I'm thinking maybe I did enough of this already. So I'm going to put this lifter back together just like those SNS ones there. I'm going to put them in the opposite hole. The junk pile. Mm -hmm. Try on something else later on, see if they work. They don't work for this application. That one's all spruced up. Okay, now we're going to take our number 10 body. We're not going to use whatever this one is. Put it 
back in the junk box. I think we got five over here still. Any one of those a crane? Oh, and I forgot to deep. Uh, I forgot to demagnetize that thing too. That's the SNS, isn't it? It is the crane, I think. Yeah, that's the SNS. I forgot to demagnetize it, so I'll just run it through a few times and see if that does the trick. <laughs> Might help. We'll do tank ties this one now. So. This one's had to have more magnetic duty on it. This is one we're going to use? No. No, we're going to use the good one. Where'd it go? I just can't, I'm, I don't see it. On the other side of the bus? What don't you see? Where's, is that the good one? No. Bottoming out, smooth, no gap, no no grabbing, nothing. Yeah, it's going on. Here it keeps sliding up. Here it goes on. Come back up. This is the ten. Brand new. That's one. Yeah. Not just brand new to you either. It's brand new. <laughs> Again, another brand new one. We keep having a lot of these brand new ones. Demagnetize. How does that thing work? You run it through here and it demagnetizes it. It's a negative magnet. When your studio ever gets magnetized, you go like that. With this is magnetized, you go like that. Anything. If this ranch here has been magnetized, like this. If you want to demagnetize your magnet, run it through there, I might demagnetize it. No, we'll leave forget about that one. Unless it's a permanent magnet, then it'll still be magnetized. It's all about how the field coils go and all that crap. I don't right. Beats me. Okay, now this stuff here has to be assembled somehow. Do you know how to do this? Well, I could put that together. There's a little spring at it. I was looking for it. Where's it at? Right back there amongst that other one. I was in there. Yep. And the ball going there first. I go second. See, I couldn't do it right. You did it wrong? Mm -hmm. It like that. Watch the video tonight. Tomorrow. You gonna learn something in the video? I was wondering if you're going to do that to me. It's going a little higher this time. This is the bad one. I know, it's bleeding down slower though. It didn't even hit 25 last time. I think we got 26, really. I think we got 26 that time, didn't we? Yeah. Bitch, way better. You like this one now? You happy with it? <laughs> you happy with it? <laughs> I'm the bike, don't make a bunch of noise. You'd be happy with it. I don't want you to ask it for too much. I'll clean that one more time just to make sure it's clean. Okay. So how are we going to adjust this one? An extra round. Not an extra flat, an extra round. So you're going to bottom it out? Not quite. That's gonna go. That's gonna go in the intake, though, right? This one. That's gonna go in the exhaust. It's gonna go in the intake. I thought we were gonna, yeah. Put some oil in there, but not a lot. It's all right. I've got some. So it don't easy. don't seize up. And the first time it goes up and down. It'll probably still bottom out in the hole and not work. We're gonna preload the plunger. Get oil in the ball, it's now pre lubed. Yep, they call that bench blood or something, don't they? Okay, we bunch, we, we, we bench lubed it because we're not bleeding. This here has more oil on it because everything else does. Perfect. You doing it right? My hands are full of oil, it must be right, right? We're doing, this is not blue oil. No blue oil? 
Can you run that same gasket again? Still in one piece? The one that you didn't damage yet? No. Not metal ones this time, huh? You didn't hurt it yet. You would try to hurt it when you're trying to get that block out, but you didn't damage the gas. <laughs> trying to break everything else. You failed at breaking that up. So it's going to pump up at that last turn, it won't go down. Okay. okay, so what do we got? We got that lifter, the one outside. <coughs> the push rod back outside where yeah. it belongs. Tools are all out there? No tools, yeah. Lift the blocks right there on the bench. Huh? It's been tested. As far as I know. Where's the other lifter? Out here. You didn't take it yet? Right yeah. Is this number 10? Number zero. 10, yeah. Got zero on it. be the one we're going to use. The lifter block, I mean, the push rod that has the uh, paper clip, I mean, the clothespin on it, is the intake. You need some oil. You need oil? The same stuff? Yeah, a little. Huh? A little bit of this? Some oil in here. I like putting lifters in dry. Yeah. There's residue on the block, but not much. We blew a lot of it out. Okay, that's going to go on the intake now, sir. Okay. So you can put that in without getting jammed this time. If the intake becomes noisy, you know it's the lifter. Gym all up again, or? No, I'm gonna let you do this one. I want you home in time to see my old lady tonight. I haven't seen her for a week. Yeah. Look at that. Didn't make it. Oh. Finger jammed in the cylinder over there and stopped. Dark so you need some light? I had to bring a light too, I didn't do it because I want to make your meter spin. We'll, make around it. we'll work around the light issue. You got it, didn't you? Nope. Damn it. There it goes. Yep. Wasn't around enough for it. The gasket dropped down and stopped it, then it hit the switch. Didn't get but it's stuck. the first time I was able to jig around it popped in after it didn't go straight in. That's the first time that's happened. So I'm getting better at it. Mm -hmm. Okay, where's all my screws at? They should be right there. Well, I can't tell because somebody's in the light. Right there. You know what's between me and the light? No. You are. <laughs> I was. You still are. Oh, the light in the building? Yeah, the only light we got around here. Oh. Do you want to film this one? So we already did it four or five times? Huh? Turn it off? It doesn't matter.